Well, good morning, everybody. Heath Putzel from Keep Your Finger in the Text Fisherman's Call Sports Fan Outreach coming to you again a little bit late. I apologize for that. A little bit of technical difficulties here as we're working through the day, but welcome back to another Keep Your Finger in the Text live report. Um, as you may know or may not already know, we do have some workshops coming up or a workshop coming up anyway, and that is coming up on March 29th. We are going to be going through the Gospel of Mark, and I'm really excited about this. This is one thing that we had um, had on our schedule to do is to go through the book of Mark. We've gone through several different um, genres of literature, and the book of Mark is one book, um, or at least the Gospels are a literary genre that we have yet to explore. So I'm excited for us to do that. Uh, you can check it out at sfoi.org, keep your finger in the text, or click on the link in the chat or in the description. And that's coming up in just a week and a half. So I hope you'll join me as we take this endeavor of this short gospel. But just because it's short in duration does not mean that it is short in detail or short in richness. And that is something that is very much uh, something we need to do is take a look at the richness and the deepness. And how do we actually preach the gospel from the gospels? Well, I'm excited today because I have a good friend that I've gotten to know for a, a couple of years now. And he's going to talk a little bit about how he came to faith, talk about evangelism and open air preaching, and then talk about how he has gotten into Keep Your Finger in the Text. Now, I want to give you a little bit of an update here. Sterling Long, um, like I said, I've known him for about a year and a half now. And as you might have seen in my Facebook post, he is sold out when it comes to keep your finger in the text or diving into scripture and learning how to preach from scripture. Uh, one of the things he has said is, I, I can't understand why anybody wouldn't want to jump in and dive deeper into scripture. So let me go ahead and bring Sterling on. Good morning, Sterling. How are you? Hey, good morning, Heath. Wonderful to be with you again. Yes. <laughs> it, it's always good, despite everything that's been going on. Uh, the Lord has been uh, testing us today, but that's okay. <laughs> no, that's not cool. <laughs> good to so, see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Now, I, I heard I mentioned beforehand, and maybe you can elaborate a little bit on this as, as we discuss our in our time, but I said you're sold out. <laughs> Every discussion I have with you um, is... I, I can't understand why people don't want to jump in. You know, I can't understand why people don't want to be involved in this depth and breadth of detail. So if you want to share a little bit about that, because I use that as a quotation because I really uh, appreciated that. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Well, uh, you know, my background, I've only been doing this for a short while and I had met you in uh, Tampa at the Super mm -hmm. Bowl. Yeah. And when it came to preaching, I thought salvation messages were separate. Uh, they tended to be anecdotal. You either use the prodigal or you use the rich man and things like that. And then you told me you preaching that morning from Psalm 150. Mm -hmm. And that blew my theology because the experience I had was people pumped salvation with a certain uh, issue that took place in the Bible. I never heard of anybody taking a psalm. And, and I actually... Once I, I had my four or five salvation messages, and I made sure that when I that morning I'd come back and check you out, and lo and behold, you were singing this and then preaching it. So <laughs> th that kind of changed me, and it made me think back to I remember when I was at school in the last year, we were doing Romeo and Juliet, mm. and the person who taught us Romeo and Juliet could recite the whole book. And then I realized if you're going to want to know anything about the Bible, you're going to have to know where you're going to have to know the text and the context and things like that. Right. And it it kind of changed me, put me back into going back to schooling. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, like I said, uh, you're, you're sold out uh, when it comes to not only like the G3 um, expository workshops, as well as 
uh, keep your finger in the text workshops. I want to talk a little bit about uh, your background so that people get to know you, not just talking about the workshops, but that people get to know you, especially as your involvement with like sports fan outreach, evangelism. But first and foremost, um, if you would share with us, how'd you come to know the Lord? Okay. Um, th that's quite interesting. I grew up Catholic. Uh, uh, my twin and I are the last two in the family. And my mom, being Irish Catholic, wanted two priests. So in a, I don't know, uh, some faith, she dedicated us to the Lord, my twin and I. And we used to joke and say, the only, we certainly are not going to be a priest unless there was a nunnery next door. So we, <laughs> there, there, was, there was no ways we were going down that road. And in fact, the more she pushed it, the more rebellious it made us. And my mom even sent us to Rome on a pilgrimage. We met the Pope Paul the six. We went to Fatima and we went to Lourdes. And you know what it did for me, Heath? It did nothing for me. It would be like saying I went to Mecca uh, and did nothing. So all that ceremony did nothing. And then my twin and I were involved in the Rhodesian Bush War. Oh, wow. Uh, and he got injured. And I'll never forget, uh, they blasted him with a rocket in it. The rocket came into mm. his vehicle and he was blinded. And when I got to him in hospital, he told me, I asked him, I went through the situation. He told me, he shouted out, Jesus saved me. Mm. And for, for me as a Catholic then, I thought, how did a Catholic learn about that? So I was like quite amazed. But as the, that didn't change me. Uh, later on, after Rhodesia changed, I went to South Africa, and I always wanted to be a, a millionaire, if if not okay. a billionaire. <laughs> I always sure. said I was, I was working on a million, and I started working for 3M, and later I had a dealership from 3M, and we were doing quite well, and would you believe I lost everything? Oh, wow. And, and I remember borrowing money from my blind twin brother and thinking, this is a little messed up. And I had heard the Kennedys saying they were cursed with Catholicism. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think when Jackie Onassis married um, uh, the Greek millionaire, uh, when he lost his son, the woman said they cursed. So I had this in my mind. I must be cursed. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? And a friend invited me to church. Um, and the, for the very first time I heard the gospel preached where the a, a person didn't have the education that I think these Jesuits had, mm -hmm. but none of the religious people could point me to Jesus. They would take me down a different road. And this guy was preaching about on a good Friday, what Christ thinks about life after death. Mm. And that so messed me up. It changed me. I ran down to the altar. To sure. <laughs> and then after that, obviously you get excited. Um, I, I, I got involved in, um, DJ Kennedy's EE3. I don't know if you remember Evangelism Explosion. Sure, yeah. Uh, it was a wonderful program. I, I loved even Kennedy's thinking, but it had one flaw. It never had the law in it. It didn't have anything to do with the law. It was really uh, almost decisional salvation. Okay. And, and, and that, in fact, uh, when I met Carol, we then read uh, went on this course in 2017, thinking that we would use it. I hadn't heard of Ray Comfort at that stage. You know? Okay. So that's what got me involved. Uh, there, there, there's a lot of things, how I lost money, how I was destitute, and just how God provided for me in his faithfulness is like kept me, in, kept me as a Christian. <laughs> right. It, it, it's been an interesting time. And then, as I say, when I came to America, um, my wife, my uh, she died of ALS. Mm. And I remember sitting in um, the hospice with her thinking, this is real. Things are going to end, you know. Right. So, And then just circumstantially, I've met street preachers. And then I got invited to SFOI, then met you, and then thought to myself, well, I better get this message right. Uh, <laughs> the more I found out about it, the more I realized, man, I, I don't even have the sense to stand out of 
out of the rain. I could write right, right, this message. <laughs> this, this message is, is real and it's wonderful. Sure. Yeah. So, so listening to you, 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 you had a 3M dealership. You were, you were, I guess you could say on top of the world. Well, after my twin got injured, right. Uh, we went down back to South Africa because there were better facilities. Okay. And I thought it doesn't matter what I've got to do. I'm going to make a name for myself. Right. And I got a job with 3M and then later on we found it's more profitable to have a dealership. I, I, I didn't lose money there when I was th with, with them. I went into lending money. So I used to travel up to Central Africa lending money. Oh, okay. I, I lost about three million. And I was destitute. Uh, wow! And, and what the, the crazy thing the, through a, a bad situation, my wife in South Africa said, "I can't take this," and she got a job working in Saudi Arabia. Oh and wow! Was, so I was looking after the kids. My wife was away, and through that, she then got a contract in America, and that's how we came to America. So oh wow! It was, it was like. And I've often thought about it. If even if if I'd made it in South Africa, I wouldn't be in America. Right. And I, I wouldn't have what I have. And I remember when we went back to the Super Bowl. Uh, it was quite interesting. California was my first state. Mm, okay. I, I used to go to work every day in a suit and a tie and a monkey suit. Sure. Who had my Armani suit and um, used to do deals. And the only job I could get in America that I really liked was truck driving. Oh, and wow. I, I remember my wife crying and saying, look what's happened to us. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know what was so good about truck driving? I could they'd give me my route. I could put on the radio and I could listen to all these things. I used to listen to Calvary Chapel, all the different Christian programs. And one day I was listening to Vernon J. Vernon McGee mm -hmm. uh, through the Bible. You know, so I found this the most amazing job I've ever had that I could truck drive. There you go. To the word. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Um, yeah. I didn't know that about you, but when you said three million, immediately in my mind, I'm thinking three M, three yeah, million. But, you know, uh, there, there's kind of a. <laughs> it, it was it was so incredible. Um, uh, I was telling Carol just the other day. Um, I really don't believe money is our biggest problem. There are other problems because when you've gone through a fire like that, it's it somehow God gives you the understanding to get through it and he shows you how to get through it and how he carries you. And I, I will never forget, Heath, I had to get kids to school and I opened the refrigerator and there was nothing in the refrigerator. There was just a light bulb. Oh, wow. One of the guys from a church arrived knocking on the door and he said, hey, I was thinking of you. I brought you um, some groceries and I checked out those groceries. They would have been exactly what we needed. Oh, wow. And and then I realized, man, uh, God's alive. He's real. And I think my tithing saved me. <laughs> you know, sure. You know I mean? Because that's what brought and then that's it just gave me a deeper understanding of what I was going through. You know? Right. Right. Wow. What what an amazing testimony to to God's faithfulness in your life. Yeah, it, it's been it's been quite quite an amazing story. And and I think also you can get saved, but you can also be quite nominal. And sure. I think my wife getting sick in that time, I actually had a nurser. And mm. if you knew me. The last guy who could nurse anybody was Sterling Long. Sure. <laughs> you know? so, so that's also kind of changed me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, you know, as as you were kind of talking, and, and especially since we've just finished in taking reps, Ecclesiastes 2, 1 through 11, that the thing that kept running through my mind is you were telling me, you know, I, I didn't know about the lending money part, but as a 3M dealership and you had everything and then it was taken away, yeah. um, you know, it, and then your wife getting sick and of course uh, passing on, you know, I, I keep thinking about, um, you know, what shall a profit a man to gain the whole world? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yet, yet, yet forfeit his soul. Yeah. 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 No, it's so. It, it, it's quite incredible that 
you possibly can do everything right in life, mm -hmm. but make one foolish mistake, your disbelief. Right. And not believe. You know? Right. And yet you could go to school, get a degree, get your master's, make a name for yourself, be everything you think you are. Right. Live the American dream, as it were. Right. But you're on the wrong path. Right. Yeah. Right. So you you mentioned uh, kind of transitioning a little bit here. You kind of mentioned that uh, yourself and Carol were in the church. You went through evangelism explosion, got yourself kind of um, trained or um, yeah. equipped to waters coming in contact. How did God use you into evangelism, SFOI, open air preaching, and kind of where you're at in your ministry today? Okay, so uh, I, I met and married. Um, Carol in 2017, mm -hmm. very shortly afterwards, we used to hand out tracks. And then I said, you know, we've got to do more than this. We've got to be able to give the gospel. And they were running an EE3 course in Gainesville at mm -hmm. one of the Presbyterian churches. And we thought what we'll do is just take that and I'll take it back to my church and my church will gladly use me. But they didn't want to. They didn't right. want any of this. And then she knows the actors better than I. She found Kirk Cameron. Okay. She found Kirk Cameron with um, uh, she, who she knew from the Left Behind series and all that uh, uh, with Ray Comfort. Mm -hmm. now, I'm a colonial. There's no ways I listen to a New Zealander. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's bad enough having to watch them play rugby. When I met Ray Comfort, <laughs> when I met him recently, I said, you know, Ray, I've never been given anything by. Uh, a kiwi they uh, we call new zealanders kiwis right right uh, i said i've always had to take it and he said <laughs> we played rugby and what have you and, and there's been big rivalry and he gave me an in and out card you know it's quite sure. a day but but anyway we found this and then just his questioning mm -hmm. changed us because we were going leading people down a two a two on a two question answer sure but it, it was really a summary of the gospel but getting the, being nice and getting the person to accept Christ. Mm -hmm. Without that person seeing why he needs a savior, you know? And then um, from there, um, one afternoon, we'd been out to the Georgia Mall handing out uh, tracks, and we came back and we said, we've got to do something more than this. And that's how I found Sun Life on internet. And okay. Peter, Peter Salas invited me to come to Athens to ah. see you guys preach. Sure. And I'll be honest, uh, I was quite nervous. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they, it took me about, I would say, a good two months coming out every Friday with them. It was great handing out tracks. That wasn't the problem. But one day he came to me and he said, do you want to break the ice? You know? <laughs> and I remember saying to him, let me walk around you and, and get my mind right. And then I did. And that, uh, Peter, Alex, uh, uh, Rich Suplenter, uh, mm -hmm. Scott and Mike, they helped me a lot. And then we found there's a distance of about 59 miles from Dawsonville. So we disappeared for a bit. And then we invited them to Dawsonville to the Moonshine Festival. And I think they must have thought, well, those old timers are never coming back. Right, you know? right. And and what happened when they came to Dawsonville, Dawsonville was such a pleasant experience. I mean, uh, they even said to me, we can see why you don't want to preach in Athens. Dawsonville, uh, if folks walk past a poster or banner that's got scripture, they'll take off their hat. Uh, right. I mean, really a great city. And there's been a lot of prayer that's gone into Dawsonville. So anyway, uh, that we had a great time. Uh, we preached the word. And each time I, I was with them, I realized, gee, there's a lot to this. Uh, uh, the, the, the depth of preaching was in the word it wasn't mm -hmm. storytelling it was like uh, amazing uh, and then they invited us to come down to, to the super bowl and there mm -hmm. was 2020 you know so that's right. how we got involved and and in fact we've been with them since the start you know okay and and and, and that's another amazing thing you know if you seek the lord you'll find him but also he'll put you in pleasant places and with people that you've never and he'll put you with people that you need. Right. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Not just uh, have comradeship and have coffee and a bagel. He, he'll really grow you with these people. Right. 
So, so it's been amazing. That, that has been our journey. And then uh, I said to Carol, I said, man, uh, I get the feeling it's like we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. We gotta, we gotta get this message out. You know, I hear people talking about a revival, especially right. up where I live. But I feel, if anything, there's apathy and there's a more, a bigger falling away. Right. And, and, and we want to say, give them a warning. Say, don't do that. That's the wrong path. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. So that's and 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 it's been beautiful. I've been really blessed. Um, uh, I I've had two women in my life. Mm -hmm. that have made me and and i can tell you i wake up with a woman every day and she'll point me to the lord uh, oh carol, amen carol's a widow and she's had mission field experience and mm -hmm. she she understands wh what the why we're together and what we're going to do so right. that is that has been amazing you know yeah absolutely absolutely and what a blessing to have a help me that you know, is, is right there with you in lockstep. Yeah. Um, yes. You know, kind of walking hand in hand there. Um, I, I know you mentioned it, but uh, I want to see if there was anything else that kind of prompted it. But so 2020, you're in Tampa. You get a chance to meet me. We're talking about what you're preaching. Um, what we're preaching is we're in Tampa in the Super Bowl. And you, you mentioned um, I told you I was preaching from Psalm 150, and it just kind of was like shocking, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, even in light of that, what prompted you uh, to join a Keep Your Finger in the Text workshop? I, I think um, the understanding that there's more to just reading something flat, mm -hmm. um, um, that, um, I mean, I was never a great reader, but when these people read a text, they could actually go into really what the the text is saying rather than thinking, well, I've learned this, this is what I've been taught and say it. And then they could show you. And there's a process there that I never knew. And sure. I needed to know that process. It, it's like anything. If you master the process, you've got it. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you don't know the, the, the process, you're going to really make things tough. It's just like learning to drive, drive a truck. There's a, there's, there's a certain um, uh, amount of discipline and the same um, exercise that you've got to do every day. And the same with understanding a text, whether it's looking back at the, the historical or the looking back at the, the, the text before it in the chapter before or going to the end. And right. And that's what I, I didn't know. I, I remember saying to you, man, this is like learning English again. Right. <laughs> right. Finding what verbs are, preposition and mm -hmm. conjunctions, because we just read it flat. You, right. You, you know? Right. Uh, and, and, and that to me was trying to find out. And I think there was another thing where you said, uh, we'll show you that you can get to the emphasis and the emphasis you'll be able to use one complete sentence mm -hmm. to state this emphasis. And I thought, this is impossible. I mean, <laughs> how are you going to do that out of Psalm 150? You know? Right. You know? So th that's what's kept me. And and then I guess the, the word is so great. I mean, we've got finite minds mm -hmm. to know that we know nothing. Right. And, and we need to keep studying it. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I You know, the word of God says, if any man thinks he knows something, he knows yeah. nothing. Yeah. And be careful lest you fall. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, <laughs> so you've been in a couple of workshops. Um, pretty yeah. much, I think, since we kicked it off um, in Tampa, you you went through the, I think, the Thursday. No, it wasn't the Thursday. Um, but you went through a couple of workshops. You've been with me and taking reps and everything else. You know, one of the things we do in the workshops is we have small group time where we mm. prepare our text you're in small group with other brothers presenting your work, opening yourself up for peer review, uh, mm -hmm. which is something we're not used to doing. You know, yeah. even in the business world to take your business proposal and say, hey, can you take a look at this? It, it's kind of a little bit intimidating to have someone else take a look and kind of uh, provide some some feedback for you. But what has it been like to participate in the small groups, present your work that you've been studying on? 
um, and talk about your work amongst other brothers. So give us a little bit of an insight as to, from your experience, what it's like to be in a, a small group and a keep your finger in the text workshop. Yeah, Heath, it's been amazing. Uh, I remember the very first one we did was Samuel mm -hmm. with you. And I can still remember the text you gave me. And to, to, to actually put something together, give a five-minute report on it, and then have people pick, I found it overwhelming. But it, it was frightening, but at the same time, it, it left me thinking, gee, uh, I know nothing. And these people that I'm with, we're not talking about professors. We're talking about ordinary people knowing so much more about the word and putting so much more back into me. Uh, I, I think the first, <laughs> my first few uh, reports must have been pure off. I don't know how they put up with me uh, uh, sitting. And I remember Dan saying, hey, well, tell me the structure. How did you find and how did you do this? And man, I was exposed. But but it's done in such a way that you uh, it's not like you in any way demeaned. Right. Uh, and, and nobody's getting personal. They're saying, have you looked at this? Have you considered this option? And uh, we really and and i think there's another side to it. Uh, it, it you have to realize that you have to do a certain amount of work because other people are working with their texts as well mm -hmm. and you have to honor them and it's it's the most incredible experience i've had but i must say it can be if you if you a little bit sensitive about it uh in the beginning i was but now i realize i needed to move on and get really get to know it uh, I've got better, but in the beginning, I was quite nervous. Sure, sure. What? Um, so going through this process, yeah. I know it's driven you into the word. I know it's been a little bit intimidating. I know it's been sometimes in the small groups, uh, getting your feet wet, and like you said, being exposed. What have you found that's really challenged you most about participating in Keep Your Finger in the Text? Um. Well, let's just look at the last text that we did. We did out of Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. where there's a, a reference uh, to a king doing well, um, having all the pleasures of life. And then he turns around and says, this is vanity. It's futile. Mm -hmm. And then from there, if you take that, you've got to say, OK, well, where's the gospel connection? How mm -hmm. do I take it through the cross? When there's not even a reference to God, right? <laughs> so, and it's not a matter of you being super creative and making out something. It's saying, okay, what is this text going to say to me? Mm -hmm. And and I remember the first time I did that, uh, we did Ecclesiastes. I got it all wrong because I took a rabbit's trail and went, ah, oh, look at this, the pronouns, yeah. And I went and said, look at me, myself, I. And sure. That really wasn't what the text was saying, you know. Sure. And 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 I think the more often you do it, the better it gets. Like anything, it's mm -hmm. like almost learning to ride. Right. First, first you need a little of those balancing wheels, and then you can you're able to ride. You know. Sure. So th th that's what I'm saying is, I find as a street preacher the fact that I can quickly look at this, this is the way to put a. a, a um, a sermon together because we don't want to preach our message. We want to preach the text. We, we want to preach the word. I mean, sure. But Sterling Long says it's meaningless. I mean, right. Would, but, 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 and then I think one day you said to me, uh, you know, if you, uh, I think it was on the George Whitfield uh, mm -hmm. thing, you said, if you stick to the text, you don't have to be creative. Right. The text will talk. And I thought about it because eventually it's like putting us. This is not Toastmasters. You think, well, I must put together something funny. You mm -hmm. don't have to do anything like that. You right. just have to preach what the word is saying. He's right. given us a message. Right. And I think the, the, uh, uh, Dan said it in one of the, um, the interviews that you had with him. The, the discipline is to say, I'm going to stick with what the text says. Not being relevant, not being corny, not being... Because this is an Irish storytelling time. Mm -hmm. This is presenting what God's speaking to us. Right. You know? and, right. And, that, and that's what we're trying to get right. <laughs> right. Right. So 
as you're working through this, I mean, this is great. And that's why I kind of, I, I, a couple of times you've told me that, and that's why I quoted you. And I, <laughs> as a kind of a promotion to Facebook, um, you, you kind of have been uh, somewhat appalled and also I think challenging open air preachers too, to say, I can't believe anybody wouldn't join or want to join in on this. Um, yeah. How has it helped your preaching? I know you preach in Athens. I know you preach in uh, Helena. I know you preach in Dahlonega. How has what you've been learning helped you become a better preacher, I guess you could say, in those areas? Okay, so the test has been when we um, go to a sports fan outreach event mm -hmm. where you'll preach for three days, you'll be with a group of people, and you mm -hmm. can preach three or four times. Right. Now, look, you can preach your same messages again, but I have found the others have also preached an array of messages mm -hmm. and to be able to quickly take a text and let the Holy Spirit show you and guide you. I've been able to keep up with some amazing uh, preachers. And I mean, I, recently we were down in um, uh, Tampa for the, um, the Indy racing. I'm trying to think what it was called the Grand Prix. Yeah. And yeah. I, I was with guys who had superior knowledge to me, and I was intimidated by that. Sure. But, but, but I mean, we could take scripture and go through it, and then they'd come up to me and say, you know, that was a good message, uh, 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 and things like that. And then I found this is only a good message because I'm following the process. <laughs> it, it's, it's, you, you know, it's not. Otherwise, you'd go with your thoughts. Right. And, and your opinions. You know? Right. You know, like there's one called the unrepentant servant. I remember preaching about this, and Terry came up to me and said, That was a good job. Mm -hmm. And it was what we were just preaching what was in the text. Right. <laughs> right. Was, you know, and then and then at the same time to learn what other people are doing around you. Mm -hmm. You know. And that's why I say I think if you're gonna do this, uh, have a foundation where you can learn the process. Right. To me. And I would say that to any beginner like me uh look street preaching is a craft just get it right in the beginning and this is one of the ways of having foundational teaching right right and i think you kind of uh cued it up a little bit but if you want to add a little bit more to that as you said trying to learn the process get the foundation of studying a text being able to translate it into how you communicate the text um your your advice to people um, ultimately, as I've heard you, is I, I can't believe anybody wouldn't want to progress um, in their, their preaching and, you know, dive in and learn the foundations or just be recommitted to the foundations. In, in your perspective, as you've seen this, why should someone, if they're considering jumping into a workshop, not really sure, um, why should somebody join a Keep Your Finger in the Text workshop? I think it's going to expose them to another way of learning a book in the Bible. It's going to give them a deeper understanding. Uh, just last night, somebody was criticizing me on Facebook using uh, Matthew 7, 24. Mm -hmm. And I could quickly go back and say, but that's not the context that we're talking about. <laughs> in fact, it'll help you stay with the context each of whatever you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you, you're talking to somebody on a one-to-one -one or, uh, but I found it's been a wonderful way to learn a book because firstly, it, let's just say we're going to do Mark on the 29th, uh, learn how to preach a gospel message from a gospel. Right. Now that is so novel. I don't even think some of the seminaries have put that together. <laughs> but we, we, no, I, I kid you not. They, they'd have them doing so many other things that this is, guys, we're going to take the gospel. So if you want to preach the gospel, get to know a gospel. Mm -hmm. And what a better way when you have, say, 10, 12 people, and they're all going to do different texts, and you're going to sit over a 12-week period and hear them put together a structure of that text. Right. It's going to be so much deeper than you reading it a few times. Right. Uh, and that's what I found. It's, it's made me not be... Well, I hope not, I'm not so stereotyped in my thinking. Sure. Uh, 
because uh, I, I, you take an instance um, when we did Monday night. Mm -hmm. We finished at nine o'clock. Thirty-four minutes later, we were looking at a song. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know what I mean. I, I, I got downstairs and I said, "Carol, you know what we've been doing? We've been checking. I mean, I don't think people realize what a wonderful opportunity that is mm -hmm. to take the word and delve into it." Right. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, for those that are listening in, when we're talking about Monday nights, um, we're part of keep your finger in the text taking reps. Um, and as Sterling mentioned, that's what we do on Monday nights. On Tuesday nights with the workshops, it gives us an opportunity to spend 12 weeks, learn the principles, the tools, and the strategies to dive into a text. We're using the gospel of Mark, but also on Monday nights. This is a chance, as you've heard Sterling talk about, to continue and continue and to continue to dive in and taking reps. We are an ongoing basis. Um, so you can jump in at any point in time. We're going through text. We've gone through Psalm 150. We've gone through Ecclesiastes 2, 1 through 11. We're going to be starting another text here coming up Monday night, and we're going to be diving in. And we take about six or eight weeks, and we get together as a group, and we dive into the text, and we talk about context, and we talk about how it's organized, and we go through the tools, principles, and strategies, and we end up with an open-air skeleton outline that we can take to our ministry context and we can preach as you've heard sterling say knowing that we're as faithful as we can to what god has been revealing in his word Amen. so any any thoughts to that sterling yeah it, it's just been an, an incredible opportunity because i've read books on certain christian <laughs> subjects but they don't have the practical training that this has Right, uh, you, you know, uh, and and that's what I say. If you if you is if, if anybody wants to present the gospel, just come and get the process right. Sure, sure. Um, someone wants to get a hold of you if they want to pick your brain a little bit more. Since you've been through uh, several workshops, you're also part of taking reps as well. Um, if they're trying to figure out a little bit more about you, your ministry in Helena, um, Helena, anyway. Um, Delanaga, what you guys are doing at UGA in Athens, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, the best is my cell number. Okay. 706-525-9343. And if they could text me, that'll be wonderful. And I'll okay. glad be, I'd love to chat to anybody and build them up and yeah, and just show them. Um, I'm actually leaving from here to go and preaching Helen today it's ah. St. Pat Patrick's Day I don't know how big that's going to be but uh, it's a tourist town so we're going to go and, and preach out and give them the word there you go there you go and especially a tourist town I'm sure they're going to be celebrating um, St. Patrick and uh, one of the big things is also kind of somewhat reminding them at times about uh, Pat Patrick's life you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> him uh, him as, as a representation of the gospel, you know, becoming a slave and yeah. then being freed or at least leaving that and then wanting to go back and convert the world. Yeah, no, um, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. So you can contact Sterling. Uh, his phone number is there, 706-525-9343. Give him a text. He'd love to talk to you about his journey as he's been going through uh, keep your finger in the text and not just keep your finger in the text. I know you've been to a couple of other um, organizations like uh, G3 Ministries before their conferences. You've been in their Bible exposition workshops. Um, and that's why I said uh, sold out as far as refining the process and making sure that we keep our finger in the text and preaching the Bible versus uh, preaching just from the Bible. Sterling, anything else you want to add? No, I, I just want to thank you for being such a wonderful mentor and helping all of us with this program. Um, I quite enjoy your, your knowledge. And as we were discussing uh, on Tuesday, just some of the new uh, programs you've got and how you're mm -hmm. able to show us around with the teachings. Uh, sure. I think we were doing something on the, uh, the Psalm 34, and you went through the... Hebrew alphabet with us. Sure, <laughs> sure. So this, uh, so that's been wonderful. Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, having a team made with Dan as well, and 
just the the guys that have been with it has been so supportive and it's really a wonderful setup that you've got well praise god for that thank you thank you praise god for that the ministry god's given us with his gifts and talents uh the ability of course to uh, partner with uh sports fan outreach and uh, now launching keep your finger in the text with the workshops taking reps and office hours coming up soon so yes. um sterling thank you very much um what a blessed time to hear more about you i i enjoy it every time we're together and whether it's diving in the word or just learning a little bit more about you and carol at the george whitfield program as well so okay. if you just want to sit tight uh, for a moment uh, i'm gonna announce a couple of things and i'll be right back with you thank you thank you brother well everybody as you've heard from sterling uh, completely sold out and the goal is to preach god's word to preach God's word faithfully. And I think you've heard that. I think you've heard the transformation about God not only saving Sterling, but using him and Carol uh, for his purposes to get the gospel out in his ministry areas. And I hope you're excited to do the same thing. Again, the Gospel of Mark workshop coming up March 29th through June 14th, 7.30 p.m. Central Time, 8.30 Eastern Time. You can find out more information by clicking on the links um, you can contact me um, if you have any questions as well. Feel free to reach out to me. Let me go ahead and put my email here. So feel free to reach out to me by email, heathputzel at gmail.com. That is heathputzel at gmail.com. You can also click on getting started or more information out on sfoi.org. Keep your finger in the text, sfoi.org. Um, keep your finger in the text, taking reps, and I'll get back to you via email or contact you by phone as well. I hope you'll join me. If it's not for the Mark um, workshop, if you're comfortable and familiar with the tools, principles, and strategies, jump into taking reps with us we want to be a resource for you keep your finger in the text i want to be a resource for you as you grow in your progress of preaching the word so that we can glorify god and preach what he intended us to preach through his word so until next week be blessed in the lord have a great weekend get out share the gospel keep your finger in the text and while you're doing that preach for the glory of his name We'll see you again soon.